The National League football teams are supposed to go into training this week to get ready for the 74 season, but the veteran players are on strike because, they claim, the owners are denying them freedom to have a say in their own careers. Pickets arrived today outside the San Diego Chargers camp, but the rookies were already inside, getting in shape to replace the vets if necessary in the upcoming exhibition games. Harold Dow reports from San Diego. They wore sneakers, shoes, shorts, jeans, colorful hats, most carried picket signs, and a few had radios. It was the first time in history that professional athletes actually walked on a picket line. Some of the top NFL players from all across the country participated in today's all-star picket lineup. At running back for the Kansas City Chiefs, 202-pound Ed Podolak. What we're talking about here, in essence, is, uh, is rights that are granted to uh, all people in our community. Defensive tackle for the Minnesota Vikings, weighing 248 pounds, Alan Page. I wish it didn't have to be, but uh, the way things have gone, you know, this is our only method of uh, showing unity, showing our strength. There were also top NFL stars from such teams as the Oakland Raiders, Green Bay Packers, Los Angeles Rams, and San Francisco 49ers. Security was tight at U.S. International University, the site of the Chargers training camp, which is private property. Therefore, this historic picket line had to be set up a mile away. President of the San Diego Chargers, Eugene Klein, was optimistic that the rookies and free agents would not walk out with the veteran players. I assume they're here to work out and practice and play football. Otherwise, why would they be here? During all this activity, a few rookies came forward. One of the rookies who was reluctant to be interviewed told us he came here to play football, and he says that's what he's going to do. Harold Dow, CBS News, at the San Diego Chargers training camp. The NFL players say money is not an issue in the strike. Bob McNamara provides background on the issues that have led to labor trouble in one of the richest of professional sports. The NFL players are demanding that team owners give in to a list of demands the players call freedom issues. Specifically, they are demanding the elimination of the option clause, that players be given the right to switch teams when their contracts expire and not to be forced to wait a year as they are now. They want the Roselle rule abolished, thus removing the authority of the NFL commissioner in arbitrarily compensating teams for players whose options have expired and eliminating Roselle's authority to discipline players. The players want the final say in whether or not they are to be traded or sold, and if so, to which team. And players want an easing of discipline, the curfews, the fines, the rules that have governed football clubs. The players say the present NFL system stifles the careers of many men. Some resent being substitutes on one team when they might be good enough to play regularly for another. One such player is Bob Stein, an All-American at Minnesota, who played second string at Kansas City for several years before he was finally traded to Los Angeles. He spoke to Leslie Stahl. If you're a football player, then unlike any other citizen, you don't have the alternative available of just quitting your employment and going to work for another employer. Because under the current structure of pro football, there's no effective way to leave one team and go to another unless that team wants to trade you. Since its early days, owners say the National Football League has struggled and finally prospered on a delicate system of competitive balance, a system that produced evenly matched franchises and rivalries and guaranteed financial success. Now there is fear the players' demands will mean the system will crumble, that rich owners with big stadiums in warm climates will hoard the best players in the league. Owners like George Hallis of the Chicago Bears, an NFL founder, says players today are not like they used to be. He talked to Bill Plant. It's got to be discipline. You know, when back in those days, they carried discipline that they learned in college into the professional games, and they didn't object to curfews or fines or harsh words from a coach. They knew that as part of the game, they're willing to take it, and they did take it. I just can't imagine any single situation or a series of situations back then that might have been an excuse for them to go on strike. Strikes were for guys who had a real grievance, like poor pay or long hours or back-breaking, boring work. Strikes weren't in the strikes, weren't in the vocabulary of the players of 30 and 40 years ago. Ed Garvey, the Players Association Executive Director, says the owners have been too stubborn in resisting change. 
Well, I think to a large extent it really is kind of uh, the arrogance of power. You have a, uh, an unregulated monopoly, 26 millionaires who control uh, people and control the sport. Uh, they have the only game in town in most instances, so that uh, there's no competition. Uh, no one can come in and take that product away from them, and so there's no pressure on them to, uh, to really get moving. There are holes beginning to open in the Players United front. Members of the Super Bowl champion Miami Dolphins are said to be anxious to defy the union and play in the college all-star game later this month. Dolphin center Jim Langer. Well, what we're planning on doing right now, I think, is having a meeting with the team. And I would go along with a team decision based on a team vote because I think then it would be uh, something that has meaning. I mean, the Dolphin players earned the right to be here, and I don't think uh, Mr. Garvey has the right to tell us we can't play the game. A break in the now apparent deadlock could come this weekend when the Miami Dolphins open training camp on Sunday. If a sizable number of veterans cross the player picket line, the strike could end quickly. Otherwise, both sides say, there may be no National Football League season at all this year. Bob McNamara, CBS News, New York.